Hello and welcome to Doc Clay's Chemistry Lessons. Today we're going to be looking at Kw and the pH of strong bases. So by the end of this lesson you should be able to identify some common strong bases. Recall the dissociation product of water and also calculate the pH of strong bases. So if we remember from our previous lessons on strong acids and calculating pH of these, uh, Bronsted Lowry acid is a proton donor for the acid and the base we describe as a proton acceptor. Now, the key word when we're talking about strong acids and strong bases is this word strong and this means that they fully dissociate into their respective ions when dissolved in water. On other words, a strong base such as sodium hydroxide will fully break down to form Na plus ions and OH minus ions when dissolved in water. For the acid we would observe a hydrogen ion and the salt of the ion to be formed. Strong bases tend to form hydroxides Another example here would be potassium hydroxide, where we get K plus, AQ, and OH minus AQ. And both of these have previously been formed from the solid. In our previous lecture, we discussed that the pH here is equal to the minus log of the concentration of the hydrogen ions. And when we looked at the strong acids, this was easy because the concentration of the hydrogen ions was simply the same as the concentration of the acid. Here we've got a problem though, because if we're trying to work out the pH of a hydroxide solution, well, we don't know anything about the hydrogen ions. And therefore, we need to come up with a new way of identifying, working out, or calculating the concentration of hydrogen ions. That's where we're going to go and look at the dissociation product of water. If we look then at the dissociation of water, then we will see that it's a reversible reaction and we form the hydroxonium ion and the hydroxide ion, OH minus. These we can describe as liquids and these as aqueous. Now, to make this a bit simpler, we can remove water from this reaction and we can simplify it and we simply get the H2O liquid is in the reversible reaction equivalent to the H plus ions and the OH minus ions. We've seen before as well when we talked about equilibrium constants that the equilibrium constant we can define as the concentration of the products to the power of their stoichiometry, which is 1 in this case, over the stoichiometry of the concentration of the reactants, which is H2O in this case, and is 1. And we have the equilibrium constant Kc. Now, the position of equilibrium actually lies heavily to the left-hand side. And what this means is we have a very large value for the water and very small values for the hydrogen ions and the OH minus ions. And what that means is 
that the concentration of water remains almost unchanged in all of these reactions. And therefore, we can rewrite a new expression for the equilibrium constant multiplied by the concentration of water. We can describe that as a new constant Kw, and that is equal to the concentration of H plus multiplied by OH minus. And we end up with the expression Kw is equal to the concentration of hydrogen ions multiplied by the concentration of OH minus ions. As well, if we have pure water, we also have an expression here whereby Kw is equal to the hydrogen ion concentration squared because the concentration of OH minus and H plus will be the same for pure water. Both of these equations become very useful when working out the pH of a alkaline solution. The final thing to note here is that the pH of water is 7. This is at 298 Kelvin. And what this gives us is a value for the ionic dissociation product of water because the hydrogen ion concentration is going to be 1 times 10 to the minus 7. And for pure water, the hydroxide ion is going to be the same, which is also 1 times 10 to the minus 7. And therefore, at 298 Kelvin, Kw for pure water is equal to 1 times 10 to the minus minus. 14. And that's got units here of moles squared dm minus 6. This value here will usually be given to us in the exam should we require it. But it's always worth knowing where the value 1 times 10 to the minus 14 comes from. So we now come back to our problem that we saw before. If we had a sodium hydroxide solution that fully dissociated because it's a strong base in water what would the pH of this solution be? We're going to say that we've got a concentration here of sodium hydroxide equal to 0 0.100 moles per decimeter to the minus 3. We talked before that the pH is described and calculated as minus the log of the concentration of the hydrogen ions. Therefore, we have to come up with a way of calculating the concentration of the hydrogen ions. We've just seen an expression for Kw being equal to H plus plus multiplied by the concentration of OH minus. And here we've actually got an expression for the concentration of OH minus. We can assume here that Kw is equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 14 moles squared dm to the minus 6. And we're going to assume that we're doing this at 298 Kelvin. So how do we work out the pH of this solution? Well, you might have already worked this out. We can rearrange our Kw for H+. Plus. We describe this as Kw divided by now the concentration of OH-. minus. In this case, 1 times 10 to the minus 14 
divided by 0 0.100, giving us a value here of 1.0 times 10 to the minus 13 moles per decimeter minus 3. This now gives us a calculation, uh, sorry, a value for the concentration of the hydrogen ions, and therefore we can use this in our pH equals minus the log of the hydrogen ion concentration, which is equal to minus the log of 1 times 10 to the minus 13, which is 13. Point zero zero. Again, we're giving this to two decimal places. This now gives us a way of calculating the pH of a strong base. First of all, we use the Kw expression to work out concentration of the hydrogen ions, and then we can again use our pH equals minus log H plus to come to a value of the pH. Okay, that's all for now. So at the end of this lesson, you should now be able to identify strong bases, recall the dissociation product of water, and also calculate the pH of strong bases. That's all for now. I hope to see you next time.